Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, a new knife from the James brand, and I dig it. Uh, State of the collection, we're going to take a look at a new G10 fruit knife. Uh, who made that one? And then we look at hollow ground EDC knives. Hollow grind is probably my uh, favorite to cut with, but also it's my favorite to look at. And we know how important that is to me. So <clears throat> before we get down to there, we're going to talk about uh, my pockets and what I've got in them. Uh, and I would love for you to call the listener line and let me know what you're carrying. 724-466-4487 or leave a comment below. And also while you're there, like and subscribe. I mean, why not? All right. So pocket check. What are you carrying? I'll tell you what I'm carrying while you're typing. Uh, I have the classic uh, but new Hinderer XM18 Warncliffe. This is a GP Knives. Uh, I'm sorry. This is a DLT trading exclusive uh, with the no choil blade here. Uh, I really, really dig this knife. It's my only um, Hinderer with the triway pivot and you can see that it's it's demarcated right there on the flipper tab that's what that symbol of uh, those three things mean uh, can you mute your mic please and uh the um action on this thing is fantastic uh, i left it on the bearings you know it came loaded with bearings in the pivot um but I chose to leave them in there. You can you can take them out. You can put in bronze phosphor phosphor bronze washers. You can put in the uh, the nylon washers. Uh, I've never felt the need. I really like it on this action. And I am suspicious as to whether um, changing out those um, pivot uh, you know mechanisms change the tolerances at all. And if if it gets more wobbly or whatever, I I. I've, anecdotally, I've heard the action changes uh, substantially uh, and the lockup changes a little. Now, is that true? Let me know. I don't know. You're like, Bob, why don't you just take the damn thing apart and try it yourself? And you know what? Maybe I will and uh, report back. Uh, but for today, I've got the uh, XM18. And just by the way, I dropped this on the tip when I first got it and broke the tip off, sent it to Jared Neve. He rescued the tip and gave it a really nice, nice, sharp edge. It is a bit wedge-like. It is a bit axe-like, uh, but it's still a sharp knife and a pretty good cutter. And that tip is incredible for, for all sorts of uh, you know these kind of cuts where you're pulling like utility knife cuts. Uh, really, really good for that. So this is an excellent knife and that 20 CV steel or M390 steel can really take it. You know, you, you, you do pull cuts with that tip and on some softer knives, you start to see it wear down the edge and you start to see it change the shape and the profile of the blade after a while. And I haven't with this yet. So uh, it is a beauty. Uh, next up in my left pocket, just in case I have to do a small cutting chore and look civilized, I have this uh, white smooth bone Barlow by Rough Rider in my pocket. Uh, Rough Rider uses 440A steel and it's suspiciously shiny. I know it's like very polished. And ordinarily, uh, that makes me suspicious about the quality of a knife if it's too polished. You know, if it's not too polished and costing $800, I, I get suspicious. But I've had so many of these Rough Riders, and they do really cut very well. And that 440A steel keeps an edge reasonably well. And that is with the caveat. I haven't done hard work with these things. So they are imminently collectible. They are great to look at. And I do love the uh, the smooth white bone uh, that they used here. Uh, Rough Riders are great entry-level slip joints if you're interested, uh, but you want to get your feet wet, but you're not sure what pattern uh, you'd like uh, to invest your money in on a finer uh, finer slip joint. You can get all sorts of different models, uh, Rough Riders, uh, the classic patterns in different handle materials and such. So uh, if you're interested in dipping your feet in slip joints, but you don't want to spend a whole lot of money at first, Check out Rough Rider and uh, see what you like, and then you know give it away if you don't if if it's not your thing because it they cost you know twelve bucks so it's not going to put you out too much. All right, so the mini Barlow in my left pocket, and then in the waistband, uh, as usual recently, I have the Hogtooth Knives EDC Tanto, such a great sheath. Also with that uh, um, concealed concept, um, I always 
uh, discrete carry concepts clip on it that clips right to the, uh, the pocket or right to the seam of your waistband and just offers excellent retention, easy to get on and off. Uh, but this is the star of the show. That beautiful maroon handle that is layered G10. It's maroon G10 layered with a black, uh, with black layers of sort of a rubberized material. And you have a very subtle grippiness on it, very subtle. And uh, actually, that was one of the things when uh, when these were on offer. He uh, Matt Chase of Hawktooth Knives had two to offer me, and I chose between them. And I really wanted this for the color, but I was concerned that the uh, rubberized portion of the grip would would uh, hang up on my clothes and such. And uh, he assured me it was a very subtle effect, and he's right. Uh, but if your hands are wet, actually, I haven't even experimented with this. Uh, but getting my hands wet, I imagine this is gonna this is gonna hold fast in my hand, not just because of the great ergonomics and the shape of this handle, but uh, because of that rubberized. Uh, feel. We're going to take a look at this knife later. This is on my list for hollow ground blades. Uh, here's a little bit of anecdotal evidence, or anecdotal evidence, yeah, as to how great this knife is and how effective the hollow grind is. Uh, last week we were doing a, uh, a fire pit, and I was uh, going between this and the Finch Harvester, and I had a third knife, and now I don't remember what it was. Oh, my big Trail Master. And I was feather sticking with those three. And the Trail Master is good, but it's big and heavy. And I, I couldn't control it and not just shave the curl off altogether. I wanted the curls to remain on the stick or on the piece of wood. And then I tried the Harvester. I thought that would be the best because it's fully flat ground and very thin. And uh, I thought it would just make great curls. And I got to say, the wood was just hard enough that I started to feel like, hmm, the Harvester, it's a robust folder, but am I going to want to horse this through wood right now? And, and, and then I pulled this thing out and it was perfect. This, this was perfect. Okay. So I bought this, this hog tooth EDC Tanto as a, you know, in the waistband defensive thing. Um, but really it's a fantastic utility knife and it made beautiful curls on the, on these, uh, on this piece of kindling. And that's what started the fire. So this knife, I, I wasn't expecting, uh, such performance, but it's super sharp and it's hollow ground. And uh, yeah, it just shaved it off like butter, shaved these little curls like butter. It was awesome. And uh, and then I lit it with a Bic. I, I think that's probably a step I have to I have to take now is to get a ferro rod or something and start lighting it the old fashioned way if I'm going to do this. So uh, that's what I had today in my pocket. The Hinderer XM18 Warncliffe DLT exclusive no, no choil. I had the Hog Tooth Tanto EDC and the Rough Rider Mini Barlow. Uh, three knives that I love. I mean, I guess I love them all. So what were you carrying today? Let me know. Uh, leave a comment below and, uh, and let me know. So just wanted to let you know also that we're on Patreon. You can check us out there. Um, and when you join us on Patreon, you do get exclusive uh, interview extras. So the Sunday interview show, if you like that show, uh, that's sort of our flagship. That is our flagship show. If you like that one and you like those interviews, um, get on Patreon and and uh, support us there, and you'll get extras from those interviews. We always roll about, I don't know, 10 to 20 minutes extra interview stuff, stuff that I don't maybe want to mention in the main interview or ask in the main interview, and we get some pretty good candid stuff. So check it out. Check us out on Patreon. Quickest way to get there is the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, like you see right there. <clears throat> Under that, under that smiling face, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. So Hogue Knives' answer to the uh, Benchmade bug out, the DECA. Beautiful knife. They came out with it, uh, well, one generation ago. So I guess that's... Uh, Three years ago, they came out with the with the Deca, and uh, it was in direct competition with the uh, Benchmade bug out due to size, materials, and action. Uh, this is a super light knife. Um, comes with a clip point or this really cool worn clip that you're looking at right here. Beautiful milled G mascus um, handle scales. G mascus is different layers of of uh, g10 and then when it's milled it creates the the swirly patterns that are reminiscent of damascus steel and uh, but they have come out with the gen 2 and this is a streamlining of it really what they did is reduce 
a lot of hardware by six uh, six screws. Uh, they they eliminated six screws from the design, made it a little bit less complex to to break down and put back together. Uh, they also gave it a deep carry pocket clip and a uh, 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 um, deep carry pocket clip. I'm sorry, and a and a lighter overall. It's lighter by 0 0.09 ounces, which when you're already starting with a super light knife, actually makes a difference. I love these exploded views uh, of the. Uh, of the knife this is pretty cool. So as you can see from here, uh, the one way they maintain the lightness of this knife is that they have two G10 handle scales, you know, on the top and the bottom. And then you can see the only liner uh, liners they have are metal liners on either side of the pivot to accommodate the able lock, the ambidextrous bar lock enhanced that Hogue uses. Uh, you can you can read that as uh, axis lock. It's their axis lock. So you need some metal material in there. Uh, right around the pivot, but then they they leave the rest without it, which uh, I appreciate because it makes it light. But another thing I appreciate that unlike the Spyderco military, even though there's no uh, metal liners down at the tail end, down at the uh, pommel end, they have still put you know embedded metal cuffs in there, threaded metal cuffs to take the pocket clip, so you don't have to wear it tip down. So I appreciate that, Hogue. Thank you, Spiderco. I'm I'm betting you have that sort of technology and that sort of engineering prowess that you could start doing that on the military. Um, I know you don't have to because people are people buy it anyway. But I bet people would buy it more if they had that option. So yeah, look at that. Look at that. Little metal threaded cuffs could make such a difference with the military. But anyway, this uh, this is about the DECA. Take a look for it. That's the DECA Gen, uh, Gen 2. It's lighter. It's easier to take down. And uh, it's a beautiful streamlined folder that can sit deeper in your pocket now. The Hogue DECA. I, I do not have one, I have to say. But uh, if slash when I get one, it will definitely be that super cool Warncliffe design. All right, next up is the James brand, a uh, uh, knife that a uh, company that I love to mention because they are uh, a, a lifestyle knife brand. You know, um, they come from the world of Nike sneakers, you know, with high, high design, high product design, and uh, started their James brand. So they have a bunch of knives. They have other lifestyle EDC products. And um, they have been just doing cool and interesting stuff kind of uh, in, in a slightly different realm than the one I pay attention to all the time. Uh, and here, this is a new knife that they have that is uh, a collaboration with a with a climber, a professional climber, Savannah Cum Cummins. It's called the Redstone, uh, presumably named after a mountain, I think. Isn't the Redstone a mountain? I don't know, maybe not. Uh, but it's a beautiful looking knife. It's got kind of a playful aesthetic. You've got a very interesting uh, construction style. The frame, the black is, you know, how we see it here is is the black part is a piece of folded over steel. So it's kind of in, integral in that, in that uh, fashion. And then it's got a, their sort of axis lock built into it. And then atop that folded over piece of metal frame, you can have uh, various combinations of G10. Uh, here we see this coral and teal uh, combination, which I think is, uh, you know, it's, it's somewhat appealing, but you can also get it in black and black and you can get it in different, uh, different colors. It's cheerful. It's bright. It's non-threatening. It's got a two and a half inch blade or 2.6 inch blade and a deep carry wire pocket clip. This is a, um, oh, and also if you if you're not looking, it's got a sort of their rounded triangular opening hole. Now to me, this is, oh, I like this one too. This is their black version with the green anodized, uh, lock pole. And if you actually, if you look down from that, uh, the lower picture, you can see how the frame is folded over there and how the G10 sits in two dif different uh, areas of the blade. It looks like it would be very comfortable and it looks pretty stylish. Again, this is a, this is a, this is a James brand blade here. Uh, two, two little sets of jimping, one at the thumb ramp and then one further up, presumably for your forefinger in a uh, utility cut. I think it's cool. I like it. I'm, I'm, I've warmed up to James brand. And I, when I actually just look at their knives, they're cool. They're cool. And from what I've heard, very well built. Um, so, well, there it is. The Redstone Folder, collaboration with Savannah Cummins. 
professional climber. Still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at two new knives, one, one that I made, and then uh, uh, some hollow ground EDC knives. Love the hollow ground knives. Stick around. Check out which ones I show off. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So you do know recently, if you if you tune in here, that I've been on a little Civivi kick. Um, I tend to, I don't know, I just come around when I come around, and and I'm into Civivi right now. A couple of years after everyone else, but I really think the brand is interesting, and and they're really fun to play with. I hate to put it that way; they have a toy like feel um, because the action is so good but they are very, very capable tools. So uh, let me show this one off. This is the this is a new one for me. Came out two years ago, I believe, at this point. This is the uh, Dylan Mallory-designed Hadros. And it is a Warncliffe hollow ground, really thinly hollow ground. That's, that's a little uh, foreshadowing to our later uh, our conversation coming up later. Very hollow ground. Look at this tip. I mean, this tip was born to break. Um, at least in my hands, but I haven't broken it yet. Knock on wood. There happens to be some right here, uh, but I, I am fearing for that. Luckily, though, if you look at this profile of this blade, it comes to such an acute point over such a gradual slope. If I do break off that tip, I still feel like I can shape it from the top and just knock it back a little and still have a, a nicely shaped worn cliff blade. I look at this knife and the thinness or the, the tallness from the dorsal side to the pectoral side of this, as if it's a shark, you know what I mean, is very thin in the handle, and the blade is broader. And this lends visually to an outstanding handle-to-blade ratio. Now, it already has an outstanding handle-to-blade ratio, but you make the blade fatter than the handle itself, visually, it's going to be weighted towards the blade. And I think that's what we see here. Um, the 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 800 pound gorilla in the room uh is the thinness of this handle i've heard this from people um from top to bottom here it is a very thin knife for me it is very comfortable for me it kind of curls up in the fingers and really gives a a very solid grip but i could see how if you have giant uh you know meat hooks it might feel like it's lost in there um, but it's a square enough cross section that it's not going to roll in your hands. You know how something's something is too short like this, uh, top to bottom on the handle and it's contoured. It's just going to turn in your hand like you're holding something round. Uh, but this is squared enough that uh, I haven't had pro uh, trouble with this. This is an, an amazing, as you may have figured, um, cardboard cutter. I went out, I had some, well, I accidentally missed a whole week of garbage right at Thanksgiving. We had all of these boxes and all this garbage, you know. Uh, and so I had to break down all these boxes. I went out with my A2D Mercantile Mark I and this. And I used that for a little while because it's a custom knife. And I'm like, I got to start using, you know, I spent a lot of money on this knife. I, I need to use it. I can't just sit there and look pretty. And it was good. But then I started using this and it was like, you know, the parting of the Red Sea. It just saw this knife coming and the cardboard yawned away from it. Uh, very, very nicely made and, and ground knife. I really love it, but also I love the action. It's just addictive to play with. It's it's a, uh, you know, thumb stud on bearings. And to me, that's, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> Flipper is low hanging fruit. I like the bearings and the, and the, and the thumb studs even better. So yeah, the Civivi Hadros, very happy to have this knife. Very, very happy with the blade shape. Um, I was really drawn into it visually, but I love the way it, it works and and uh, uh, the, uh, how I use it. Now this thing, oh, I went out to dinner with my daughter a couple of nights ago. It was just a daddy-daughter night because uh, the others had something going on. We went to her favorite little Japanese restaurant and she drew something really cool on the back of the uh, placemat. The placemat was immense. We didn't want to take the whole thing, pulled out the Hadros, uh, did two very light cuts, just scored on either side, and uh, didn't mess up the table, but made just a light enough score. Didn't even press down, just used the weight of the blade, so sharp, made a light enough score I could 
tear down the seam and uh and it was cool i don't know it was cool cool use of the knife and uh didn't destroy anything it was so sharp i didn't destroy anything behind it and and well there it is civivi hadros worth its money as you can tell now all right next up i was uh was telling jim before my wife and i had a double date this uh this weekend it was a lot of fun an old friend of my wife's he's a cop li who lives around here and and his girl and we got together and it was it was a lot of fun uh but before we went i had this brainstorm i was like oh i'm gonna make a g10 knife and uh so with an hour to spare and that might seem like a lot of time but if you've ever it wasn't. It wasn't. My wife takes a little while to get ready, and she thinks that I take that much time to get ready, which I don't. So I'm like, I'm going to go out and make this G10 knife while she's getting ready. Ran out, and uh, I had made the design. I have uh, I have a book full of them, and uh, th it was this design I wanted to make, uh, a little G10 Pakal knife. I knew that I had uh, um, pieces of G10 in this size, in the size of that rectangle there. And so I went out, went out to the grinder, pulled it out of the shed, dusted it off because I haven't used it in ages. And uh, and I whipped this out in 15 minutes. <laughs> it, was, it was so fun. It was a race against time because I didn't want to get in too much trouble for not getting ready, but actually making a G10 knife in the backyard. And if you look at it, this is a uh, obviously it's not a knife knife. It's not going to cut. It's not a cutter. It is for last ditch self-defense um you know it's a little g10 pakal knife and uh i was very happy with it and i still am and so i'm gonna make a couple more i'm gonna see what i can do with this in terms of uh you know refinement and making this is a, a 15 minute effort uh, you know g10 is not hard to grind it it disappears very quickly it's not like grinding steel and you have to stand there for a long time and concentrate and stuff this you just it you can just zip it out and uh well there you go it's your disposable uh disposable get off me implement so I'll, i'm going to try some more of these and uh and see what it, what it's like now yesterday last night i was carrying it around in this uh pocket slip i made this pocket slip a while ago and i never use it uh it's for carrying around my my 110 my buck 110 but it sits in the pocket great like this and then you can just reach out and and grab it and then reach out and touch someone that's so so corny uh but look at this i i it comes straight off the fist so if you're if you're if you need to use it and someone is hassling you not hassling but if you need to use it for whatever reason and you just kind of throw out a back fist um it, it will make contact with that point cool thing about this too about these g10 knives is that if you do happen to use it like yesterday i was poking it into stuff and i dulled the tip i made a really acute tip originally dulled it if you can see it there so all you do is take a, a something round this is an old collie stick and uh, tape some sandpaper on it find the right angle and you can sharpen that edge which is you know a one-time use edge and then you can refine the point too so, yeah, I'm just going to experiment around with this a little bit. I think it's uh, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, I like these Pakal style knives, but it, they don't have to be. Um, they're just sort of my homemade version of the uh, of the cold steel plastic knives that you use to hide and stash and stuff. So there you go. G10. What do you think? Let me know. I am curious. Uh, that's the DeMarco fruit knife in G10 right here for self-defense. All right. Well, so I showed a couple of these off earlier, um, but I want to show off some hollow ground knives. To me, the hollow grind is appealing in all ways. First of all, it's very thin behind the edge. And for the kind of cutting that I do, which is light, uh, it, it is uh, it's ideal. It's very thin, very, um, very easy to, to cut with and is not focused on hard use. It is not something that needs to be wedge-like because you're going to do something rough with it. Uh, to me, the hollow ground blade is evocative of the straight razor, which uh, which was one of the first blades I fell in love with as a kid because my grandfather used one. And uh, yeah, so let's, let's get into it. Let's take a look at some of these 
hollow ground blades. Another great thing about the hollow ground blade, and you'll see this with the Chris Reeve knives, is that uh, you can sharpen them, you know, until that wedge, you can sharpen them kind of indefinitely. All right, so let's, uh, let's, let's take a look at this first one. Uh, I'm gonna get this one. Uh, there are a couple of customs in here, two customs and one kind of custom grind, but I wanna show them off anyway. Um, sometimes people don't like to see things that they can't themselves get. You can get this. This is the hogtooth knife I was just showing. And uh, I won't regale you again with that story. But uh, as I mentioned, the hollow grind and the super high edge on this uh, really saved the day with the uh, with the kindling. And you have a good with this hollow grind and with the sharpening choil. You have a good eighth of an inch you could sharpen up before you would have to extend that choil up. I mean, if you were going to be using this your whole life hard all the time, this is uh, this is 154 cm. So eventually you would you would have to back up the uh, sharpening choil a little bit and you would have a more oblique edge, but you could keep going with this. And um, yeah, that hollow grind just made it super sharp and pleasant um, to work with. You know, you have something that's very thin behind the edge and you're pushing through something you want it you want it to go through easily you don't want to have to apply too much force because then you have to stop that force at a certain point and it becomes harder to control all right next up are my chris reeve knives i have two of them i'll just show them both together um the sabenza 21 and the Umnumzan. two beautifully hollow ground knives here um let's look at the sabenza this really does show off the concept I was just um, discussing. Look at, here, let me wipe this off a little bit. Also a Jared Neve edge, by the way. But look at the uh, base of the blade here. And this effectively is a sharpening choil here. And look at the plunge grind is all the way back behind the front of the frame. So essentially, and, and then you have this hollow that's quite deep and starts right about halfway down the blade here. Well, I mean, it starts here, but it gets thin, kind of right in line with this pivot. So if this were your only knife and you used it all the time for your whole life, or you know, maybe even less, you could keep sharpening up that blade until you hit basically here, where the blade meets the, um, where the blade meets the handle. Now, hopefully, this isn't your own, uh, your only knife, and hopefully you don't have to reduce it by that much over time, but you could technically. Uh, so yeah, I had this knife. This is a, a classic and one of my favorites, and I had it, and it was not. I just for some reason this is S35VN. I just could not get a sharp edge on it. I mean, it was sharp, it was reasonably sharp, but I wanted it crazy sharp, and so I didn't send it to Mike Emler, crazy sharp. I sent it to uh, uh, Jared Neve. And he uh, he put that beautiful mirror polish on it. Uh, so now it is really living its full, its best Sabenza life. And uh, as, a, as a super sharp hollow ground blade. Also, here is the Umnumzan. This too is hollow ground. Uh, feels less deep to me, but, but still substantial. And again, you have you have some room here, less room, I think, to sharpen upward because you're dealing with a secondary edge up here. And uh, that would take some doing, I think. Very thin down here by the by the time you get to the edge. So just a great cutter. And this is also s 35 vn This one is interesting because it's got that um, ceramic ball that acts as both the detent and the lock bar interface. Let's see if we can get it to focus in there. Uh, so the action on this is very, very, very smooth, but not certainly not drop shutty at all. That's not the point. This is more of that hydraulic thing. And it has a great sound. I'm gonna close it, and I want you to hear this detent when it closes. Oh, so nice. All right, so the Chris Reeve knives, employing regularly employing uh, hollow grinds to great effect next one that uh, that uh, employs a hollow grind to great effect is the yojimbo this is the spider co yojimbo 2 geez this is like an advertisement for uh 
for Neve's knives, but I dropped this one on the tip too. He rescued this one. He's excellent at that. I highly recommend his services. Uh, also, I highly recommend you don't drop your knives on concrete. Um, but if you can't avoid that, <laughs> send it to Jared. All right. So this is uh, 20 CV. This was a, a DLT exclusive a few years back. And uh, I think they have one now also with uh, CPM 20 CV, but it's coated black and it has the tan handle. Is that right? Is that DLT? I think so. They do so many cool exclusives. This knife, one of my favorites, one of my absolute favorite designs, designed by um, Michael Janich, who's been on the show a bunch of times, uh, a world-renowned expert in self-defense, shooting, knifing, not knifing, but shooting, using a knife for self-defense, or and integrating a knife into your, um, your self-defense strategy with martial blade concepts. That's his uh, company and his martial art that he's created. Um, he designed this for use like this with the thumb all the way up on the blade. So the ergonomics are outstanding. And then the, uh, uh, this hollow grind is deep. It is like a straight razor, very deep and extremely sharp on the edge and very, very pointy. No doubt, no doubt this would be a very effective self-defense tool and utility tool because this is an outstanding utility knife. Uh, but again, be careful with that tip. This would be excellent if this were a flat grind as well, but it would be wedgy. It would be a little bit wedgy. Wedgy, it's funny to say wedgy. It would be wedge-like and uh, they would probably have to grind much higher up the blade uh, to get it effectively thin there otherwise like i said it would be more like a wedge so that hollow grind saves the day in this case and really makes this thing a, a really effective tool it's got a quite robust blade stock thickness here and yet it is a slicey slicey nasty thin sharp edge there and that's thanks to the hollow grind all right uh if you don't have a yojimbo <clears throat> i highly recommend you get one in your collection if if you if it has any appeal because it's not just a weapon it is like i said look at it it looks like a, a big utility knife it is a great uh, great tool and also fun to play with because it's got the compression lock right here one of my few compression locks and yeah it is fun to play with all right next up is the hinderer xm18 spanto that's not hollow ground you say uh, no, but I had this one hollow ground by Josh at Razor Edge Cutlery. Uh, he was on the podcast early on. You should check that out. Interesting guy. Uh, but he is one hell of a grinder. He took this, uh, quite wedge-like hinderer, um, spanto, which was sharp and which I could get reasonably sharp, but he thinly hollow ground this and did such a beautiful job. This is my sharpest knife, I think. I think this is probably my sharpest, absolute most sharp knife. Uh, as you can see, it's got sort of a, a satin from the belt on that uh, on that hollow grind. And then right up front, he did the Spanto tip as a flat grind, as it should be, uh, for robustness in puncturing and thrusting and that kind of thing. Um, this is how the Spanto should be, I think. I really do. I, I wish, I do wish uh, hinderer knives would hollow grind their blades or at least get them a little bit thinner. Um, and I know they have the thinner models. I haven't checked those out, uh, but I'm not sure if that translates into the grind. But this is the perfect state for the Spanto, in, in my opinion. And uh, you're not sacrificing strength. It is still a strong, you know, this S35VN, and it is backed up by a thick spine. Um, but to have that, straight razor type edge look at that it's just so beautiful um and it just cuts so well so no you cannot go out and get this unless you have someone else do it uh, bgm knives also does great regrinds on everything but i've seen him do some awesome uh regrinds on hind hinderers john miller of uh bgm knives check him out on instagram if you want to get something hollow ground or check out razor edge knives though i'm not sure if they're still doing uh, that kind of worker if they're full-time making knives. So check them both out. Next up is one that you see me talk about a lot, and I feel like I've talked about it recently quite a bit because the question came up, what is your grail knife? Uh, when I was on the, the Knife Nuts uh, Friendsgiving, that was one of the questions. And my uh, 
my thought was this. Uh, this is the Boker version of it, but a Charles Marlowe squale is my is my grail knife. So if this this is the Boker reproduction, and they did an awesome job collaborating with uh, Charles Marlowe to make this make this beautiful knife. That's a full four inch blade. One of the most gorgeous. Look, it's so reflective. It's kind of hard to even see on this camera, but uh, just such an incredible shape to that blade. And then so broad, this is like an inch and a, that's like an inch and a quarter at, at the very tip of this uh, belly here to the spine. And it is hollow ground to nothing. It is so thin. So you take that thin hollow grind, you add that uh, recurve. This thing is a cutting slicing monster, slashing too if you had to uh, because of that recurve. This knife also would be fine with a with a flat ground uh, blade, but in the hollow grind, it really allows it to express its its you know maximum a cuttiness and maximum b beauty. You're like Bob, beauty. What does beauty have to do with it? We're talking about uh, blade geometry here, uh, sort of <laughs> with the hollow grind. What does looks have to do with it? Well, I gotta say, I do have uh, an emotional attachment to how things. Um, make me feel when I look at them. And this makes me feel good. So I'm glad this sucker is hollow ground and I'm sticking to that story. Uh, but besides that, just a very effective thin blade and it's VG10. And imagine that it still works. It's not a super steel. All right, putting it down. And why does it work? Because of that hollow grind and the edge geometry and probably the heat tree too. All right, so next up are a group of knives. And those are the Civivis. I showed you the Hadros before, but here we have the, the Keen Natter and then the Asticus. They all have hollow ground blades. Um, these are fully hollow ground, the Hadros and the uh, Asticus, and then the Keen Natter just on this uh, recurve portion. They do it, but I don't know. Well, okay. I almost said it. I almost said they do it best, but for, for this strata of knife, I believe they do. They do it best. They have so many of these hollow ground blades that are just so damn thin and so sharp and quick and slicey. I think it's their, I think it's one of their calling cards. Now, a, a lot of people have begun to notice that Civivis are a lot the same, a lot of the same, but different, you know, um, and that's a good thing because they quality is not the question. Design is the question. So if you have a large body of work that people can choose from, people trust the quality of your of your workmanship, all they have to do is look at the design, look at the specs to know if they're going to like the knife. But their real, I think their real USP is this, this hollow grind that they can get on these blades because they make them no matter what the design, they make them extremely useful and uh, usable knives. This one is awesome. The Civivi uh, Asticus. I highly recommend this knife if you like larger knives because it's got a pretty large 3.8 inch blade, but it's very thin and very light and the action is totally addictive. And with that finger choil there, I mean, you, you could do some, you can do some serious work with this knife. Um, the Hadros also I like a lot, as I mentioned before. Um, the hollow grind is a, a, more aggressive in this one because it comes down to a very thin edge, but it has less room to do so. And then on this, this is also very sharp, the Keen Natter. And then you have that flat grind. So I'm um, looking forward to more getting more Civivis. I, I think the, uh, the hollow grind is, is what keeps bringing me back. Uh, the hollow grind and the action. And they do have some pretty cool designs. So uh, there they are. I do have a um, cogent on the way, the button lock. And that will be the uh, Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife this uh, month. I need to announce that on the next uh, Thursday Night Knives. The cogent, the button lock. I cannot wait. It looks so cool. I think they did a, did a great job designing it. All right. I'm just going to leave one Civivi in the lineup here. And then you get the idea with the rest. Okay, next up is, I mentioned this earlier. This is a custom. Uh, this is the last of the things that are custom. 
and that is the Mark II. This is the uh, attention to detail, the A2D Mark II, and, or Mark I, I'm sorry, <laughs> Jeez. Mark I. This is one of the early ones. He's been making them now for a few years. Uh, this is built like the proverbial tank for sure. And uh, has some things that I know he's improved, you know, some uh, some refinements in the milling and uh, um, in the action and such. But this thing, look at how broad this blade is. Let's measure this out. This is over over an inch and a half from stem from uh, here to here, from the top to the bottom, and hollow ground, aggressively hollow ground, and. Uh, very gets very thin now he this was one of his first um folders and he did such an incredible job on the hollow grinding on this folder i think douglas esposito has uh, a natural talent with grinding um, because i know he started and pretty much out of the gate he was doing incredible work uh first with fixed blades and uh and now with folders I have uh, one knife that I did not put in here is another knife by Douglas. It's a uh, fighting knife and it's double hollow ground. It's got a hollow grind here and it's a bayonet grind. And that top portion is also hollow. Of course, I had him double edge it because that's what we do here. As you can see, beautiful use of, I think he used a panograph actually. This is before he had a mill, I think. Is that possible to do that? Maybe, maybe. Maybe not, but this inlay is really, really nice and perfectly fit. I mean, perfectly fit on both sides. Yep, attention to detail, Mercantile. I love his work and I, I really like his hollow grinding. He's got a bunch of tantos that are really nice that are also really deeply hollow ground. I uh, checked out a whole bunch of his work at Blade Show and uh, was sad that I couldn't afford it. <laughs> but that that would be, you know, if I were, if I were to go to Blade Show and buy an A2D, uh, knife that would probably be about all I would get. All right, three more here. This this next one is uh, one that was a gift from Mr. Filato, a, a, a loyal listener and patron. And uh, when he sent me his Winkler knives to check out, he sent this in the box, and it was around my birthday time. And he said, "Happy birthday! Keep the proponent," because he had heard me on uh, the the podcast with Josiah. DeMille of Millet Knives talking about this and how I always regretted that I missed this. This is a drop knife uh, designed by Schwartz, uh, TJ Schwartz and produced by Millet. And uh, I missed the, the drops of this and kind of always regretted it because it, I think it's really, really, really nice on the eyes. But also I figured it would be akin to a... Um, akin to the perfect size griptilian and it kind of is um, but i like this much more than a griptilian personally i like the weighting actually the weight of it but the real star of the show here is this hollow grind now this is i remember when millet got the capability to cnc hollow grind uh, because it was around the time that i reached out to them and i i wanted to find out what it would be like for your average Joe, like myself, to have one of my uh, fixed blade designs made by them. And we had some conversations and and uh, some email conversations, and and I kind of let it drop because I wasn't ready to financially to, to do such a thing. But I do remember Josiah saying, we just got hollow grind capabilities on our CNC mills. And uh, I didn't know that that was a thing. I mean, I, I didn't know that that was uh, something special. Uh, but it was. I remember it was a it was a big deal, and so a lot of the millet knives feature these very thin behind the edge hollow grinds, and this is one of them. This Perpetua is amazing. I mean, the the blade here is really, really an amazing blade because, like I keep saying, it's it's a very thin edge and uh, hollow ground, but you get to the tip where you're going to be. The shape of this is is just begging for utility cuts, for pull cuts, for this kind of thing. But you get to the tip and you've got full robust, I, I use that word too much. It, you've got full uh, blade stock behind the edge. You've got this little distal taper that will naturally appear, but you've got a whole bunch of beef behind this. So this is one that I feel comfortable dropping on its tip. 
No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but if it did, I, I have a feeling it would it would fare much better than, say, the Yojimbo. So if you can, check this out. They have, uh, I think that this drop is no longer drop. I'm not even sure what's up with drop. They're not producing too many knives anymore, I don't think. And I think they're headed in a different direction. But they really hit some really, I don't know, golden combos with the with the collaborations they put together. So hopefully they're they're still they're still in the game. All right, so that's the Millet Perpetua designed by TJ Schwartz and uh distributed by Drop, formerly known as Mass Drop. All right, second to last is I mean this company, this company really does it right. Riot, look at this. This is the K2. First of all, gorgeously milled handle and bronzed anodized Reminds me of a dragon. Beautiful backspacer. But the star of the show here, oh, is this gorgeous Tanto blade. I know some people don't like machine satin, but I think uh, I think that this is exquisite machine satin. Very, very aggressive hollow grind. It looks like a looks like such a menacing knife to me with that hollow grind. Um, looking kind of like a straight razor. But then you have that upswept flat ground tip and that swedge. I, I, I just can't see myself ever getting rid of this knife. Now, uh, I don't carry it that often. Um, but and I feel like I could get a, a nice, a nice little chunk of change for it if I were to sell it. But I think it is so perfectly done, uh, not only in the design, but in that grind and in the execution of it that uh and then of course this handle and the way it feels i don't think i'm ever going to get rid of this knife and uh well there it is one one little thing about it is that i noticed they kind of flubbed right here at the sharpening choil with the edge it got a little bit wide and dull right here and i think that is just uh in you know just on this specimen, it's like the guy who was sharpening it got a phone call right when he got there and he forgot to like make that edge right by the choil totally sharp. But this is also one of the best actions on a knife that I have. Just a great, great knife. Okay, last but certainly not least is the Cold Steel AD10. Say, Bob, that's not a hollow ground knife. The first uh bit the first drop out of the gate with this was hollow ground and i and i happened to get in on it and uh you know they made a whole bunch of knives and they hollow ground them and then and but at the same time they came out with the ad15 and the ad15 was flat ground and uh after this first drop they brought the ad10 to a flat grind which i'm sure is um, you know incredible i'm sure it's a very uh effective tool and uh, one could argue because it's flat ground it's going to be more capable of hard use more capable of uh lateral kind of stuff and um you know because it's not so thin right here it's it's less likely to chip or break in super hard use um okay i guess but you know if you're using it like that you're probably not using the right tool anyway I'm just glad I got this hollow ground one. I know that they are out there. I know you can find them um, on the secondary market, but but uh, the original batch of all these, I'm sure, was 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 swept up. But I have seen these on Blade forums, and people will specify that it's the hollow ground version. Might be worth your while if you're looking for an AD10 to ask. All right, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my my hollow grind uh, ground EDC knives. I really uh, dig the hollow grind. I don't have to. I don't have to continue to tell you why, but uh, I was sh kind of shocked to find that so many of what I have is not hollow ground. I kind of thought I had more, um, but I don't. All right, so let's uh, rattle these off, and then I'll let you go. Uh, we got the the EDC Tanto from Hogtooth Knives. We got the Chris Reeve knives, uh, Sabenza Twenty One, and the Umnum Zan. We've got the Yojimbo 2 by Spyderco. We've got my special uh, reground hinderer here, uh, the Boker Squail, the Civivi knives in general, 
the A2D Mercantile Mark I, the Perpetua from Drop and Millet. We got the K2 from Riot and the AD10 from uh, Cold Steel and our good friend Andrew Demko. Uh, hollow ground, flat ground, what's your preference? Let me know. Uh, it, is it Scandi ground? Do you prefer that? Let me know in the comments uh, and leave a like while you're at it. All right, that does it for this edition of the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, please be sure to check out Sunday's interview show. And of course, tomorrow night at 10 p.m. is our live stream Thursday Night Knives. Uh, also, you can download us on all the podcast apps out there and listen to the golden tones of the Knife Junkie podcast when you can't watch. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.